Adrin versus Jaina. Knowledge is power. My blade burns with holy fire. I remember growing up and watching things on the screen. It was always a white guy, white guy who played this superhero. So we need more people of color to be in the MCU. And it's just amazing that it's changing. The trailer for Echo, the next series that Disney is set to release in the MCU has just dropped and I I have some mixed feelings. And by the way, in case you're not familiar with the premise of Echo, it centers around the character Maya Lopez, who is not only a woman, but she is also deaf and Native American. So at least, I mean, a 300 on the diversity scale. And the teaser description that's currently being given for the show is that, quote, Maya Lopez's ruthless behavior in New York City catches up with her in her hometown. She must face her past, reconnect with her Native American roots, and embrace the meaning of family and community. And now Maya's ruthless behavior in New York City is actually referencing the character's appearance in Hawkeye. So Hawkeye was actually the first time that Echo appeared in the MCU, and so this series kind of takes place place after that. And if you're subscribed to this channel, you'll know that I am currently very critical of Disney's MCU so much so that I actually think the past like three videos I've done have pretty much been hating on it. So in the interest of not being too much of a negative Nancy, I'm gonna start with what I'm actually looking forward to about this series. The first thing I think is pretty cool is that totally Echo seems to be a lot darker than anything else we've seen in the MCU, at least the Disney Plus iteration of it. In fact, this is the first Disney Plus Marvel series that will be rated TVMA, which is basically like the TV version of being rated R. And if you saw Echo's trailer, you'll understand why this is. It was pretty dang bloody, so much so that it actually features a man getting shot in the face, which is like pretty hardcore for Disney. One of the complaints that I have, and I know a lot of you share about Disney's MCU, at least what it's like right now, is that everything seems really uniformly sugary and polished and the same kind of PG sarcastic humor. And so I think it's gonna be at the very least refreshing to have a bit of a change of pace there. And speaking of Echo being a lot darker and more mature than other MCU series like She-Hulk or Miss Marvel, Echo will not only be releasing on Disney Plus in January, but it will also be coming out on Hulu. So that's kind of cool. And I've even seen some people People online saying that this is Disney's way of like priming us for their R-rated Deadpool 3 movie. I don't know if that's true, but if so, I'm all for it. Oh yeah, this series does feature the character Kingpin, uh, played by Vincent Donofrio. Probably saying that wrong, but uh, he looks pretty badass, so I'm I'm excited to see that. Now on to where I have some skepticism surrounding the quality of the show that we are going to be given. If you guys haven't been following the news surrounding this show, uh, let's just say it's been somewhat of a rocky road to get here. Earlier on this year, it was reported that, quote, a new rumor about Marvel Studios' upcoming Disney Plus series Echo claims the series was originally so bad that the company had to reshoot the entire thing. Scooper Jeff Snyder is on record saying about the series, quote, I'd heard the show was kind of plagued by issues throughout production. I'd heard that it was a 
mess. That the show came in and they basically had to reshoot the entire thing. I'm told that they originally shot eight episodes and Kevin Feige thought it was unreleasable. So they talked about cutting it down to four episodes or six in post, then they ended up reshooting it. Snyder then also apparently added, my source did not actually know how many episodes they wound up with, but apparently it needed like a top-down rejiggering and Kevin was not happy with it. And obviously that's just a rumor, it's totally unconfirmed, but if you ask me, I am inclined to believe it. Since anyone who's been paying attention knows that Disney has had to push back the release date for this series. Originally, Kevin Feige himself had indicated that Echo would be releasing sometime in the summer of 2023. And of course now it's been announced that we are getting the show in January of 2023. For. And to be charitable to Disney and the people who were involved in this show, perhaps it could be said that, yeah, maybe initially there were some issues with production, hence having to delay the release date. But you know what? This really just means that they weren't afraid to put in the extra work to ensure that the show was as good as they know it could be. And so, you know, now that it's been put together and they spent the extra time and the extra money, we should, we should be confident that the final product is going to be good. In a perfect world, maybe I would feel comfortable uh, believing something like that. But considering that despite the different tone, this is still the same studio that gave us She-Hulk, that gave us Miss Marvel. I don't know, let's just say I, I have my doubts. And further contributing to my hesitation to get too hyped for this show is the fact that Bounding Into Comics has also previously written that, quote, according to the latest whisper on the street, so again, this is a rumor, take it with a grain of salt. Marvel's upcoming Echo is so abysmal in quality that the studio wanted to give the Disney Plus series the Batgirl treatment, i.e. not release it at all, only choosing not to at the last second in order to have something to air during a potential content drought resulting from the currently ongoing writer's strike. Again, I don't know, the show isn't even out yet. Maybe it's gonna be amazing, the best thing we've ever seen. All I'm trying to say is that if you are still a huge Marvel fan, Somehow, uh, maybe don't get your hopes up. Or at least don't get them up as high as people in the access media because, oh my goodness, they are so excited for this show. Which also, if you ask me, is kind of a red flag in and of itself. But they are so hyped about how diverse this show is going to be. As Variety excitedly posted, Marvel released a trailer for Echo, the first superhero series ever to center on a deaf and a Native American character. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, as far as I know, the first differently abled, I think is the PC term now. The first superhero with a disability to be on screen, I think was Daredevil. And there were a lot of disability activists who were really excited about that because you know, it's representation. And then in terms of a Native American superhero, I don't know if she was the first one, but Danielle Moonstar, who is Native American, was the main character in that new Mutants movie. And the reason why I bring this up is that I feel like these activist journalists are so eager to celebrate representation and movies and TV shows that they're kind of tripping over themselves to come up with different firsts that are being broken, even though those firsts are continually getting more and more niche and ridiculous since representation as a whole has been going up for like a long time now. It's not as if we are still living in an era when only white men are on the TV, despite what you would think if you exclusively listen to these journalists. And I mean, Variety did kind of get roasted for that post. Some of the things people replied with included things like, only when there is a blind, autistic, pansexual, paralyzed, and Palestinian superhero can society be healed. Is there a checklist we could use to know when we're done pandering to specific subsets of society. And of course, a reference to South Park's The Pandaverse, put a chick in it, make her lame and gay. And it's not just the media, of course, it should come as no surprise that the people actually involved in the production of this series are also just very gung-ho about the representation that is being featured here. In fact, according to Variety, executive producer and director Sidney Freeland was quoted as saying, representation was extremely important to myself and to everyone on the crew. Freeland, who is Navajo and grew up on the tribe's reservation in New Mexico, said she grew up reading Marvel comic books and attending powwows. But for Freeland, those two constants in her life never overlapped, which was something she was looking forward to connecting throughout the development and production of Echo. And it says here that first, Freeland said she and the creative team have reimagined the character's indigeneity, making her a member of the Choctaw tribe from Oklahoma. In the comics, Maya is from the Blackfeet tribe, but Freeland said that the accompanying visuals amounted to a hodgepodge of imagery that made for a muddied and ultimately inauthentic backstory. Additionally, this article also goes into how, quote, another critical choice was how to portray a lead character who speaks almost exclusively through ASL. Representation, again, Freeland said, 
played a significant role. The crew took ASL classes and Freeland ensured that hey, pull subs included the friend. actor signing. I want to say here that there's nothing wrong with trying to be as accurate and authentic as possible when you're doing something like filming a TV show. And that includes making sure that your character's backstory makes sense. And, you know, if she comes from a Native American background, that the cultural aspects that are presented there are accurate. And similarly, if the character is deaf and she's supposed to speak in ASL, that, you know, it's actually someone who can sign in ASL and the, the signing in the series is, is real. That's all fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And even though, you know, I make jokes about, ooh, this is so diverse. Ultimately, no, there's nothing wrong with Echo centering on a deaf Native American woman, but the reason why I and a lot of others are poking fun at this insistence on just so much diversity is that it does seem, at least from an outsider's perspective, that the crew behind the series was more interested and excited about the representation than the actual character. And what I mean by that is that Echo is an existing character from the Marvel Universe. And now I'm not a huge comic reader, but at least according to Wikipedia, the character's first appearance was way back in November of 2005. And yes, the character is described as being deaf and Native American and a woman, but clearly from all of the appearances she's had, there's a lot more to her character than just that. And so if I were a fan of the comics, I would hope that any team that was adapting this character for something that's going on streaming, that they would be interested in staying true to to the source material for the character beyond just, you know, her immutable characteristics. But at least from this interview, that does not seem like it was the case. I mean, not only did they admit they kind of changed her tribal heritage, which maybe you could say isn't the hugest deal, but they've also apparently changed her powers, which if you ask me, is a pretty big part of who a superhero is. Freeland, this executive and producer, was also quoted as saying, her power in the comic books is that she can copy anything, any movement, any whatever. It's kind of lame, Freeland said. I will say that is not her power. I'll just kind of leave it at that. And so this producer doesn't actually go into how Echo's powers are gonna be different in this series, i.e. what they actually are, but the fact that she dismisses the comic book character's powers is just kind of lame. I mean, like, you didn't have to make a series about this character. You could have chosen a different character and you, Freeland lady, you didn't have to take this job. Ultimately, my biggest concern with Echo is really my same concern with any of these other projects that seem like they're more interested in pandering to activists than creating good entertainment is that the goal here is not actually a good or interesting story. It really is just representation. But that's pretty much all I have to say for now. And as always, I would love to know what you guys think. Uh, have you been following Echo as a comic book character? And are you interested in the way this new series looks? Are you going to be watching it? Would you like me to watch and review it? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Until next time. 全新Ariel超强抗臭高湿度也不怕赶紧闻得到 The glory days of the MCU are well behind it and when Marvel fans now look to the future unfortunately it just doesn't seem like there's much worth getting excited about Now if you're someone who watches independent entertainment commentary like we do on this channel those statements don't surprise you and you likely agree with them however that has not been the narrative that the mainstream media has been pushing right for so long Marvel has kind of been the golden boy franchise they could do no wrong not only were they backed by disney mega bucks but they were also part of advancing the message i mean do you really think access media is going to be out here criticizing one of the franchises that has been at the forefront of diversity washing existing characters in order to please really their own ideological biases of course not right well we have a new piece out from variety that has me believing that things might be changing the article which is a really long one by the way we're going to be going through some parts of it but i recommend you read it in its entirety if you haven't already it's actually pretty interesting a lot of stuff we've already covered on this channel but still it's worth going through it's titled crisis at marvel jonathan major's backup plans the marvel's reshoots reviving original avengers and more issues revealed and attached here we also have an image that's already almost going viral with variety asking is marvel